You hear people say it all the time. You have to quarantine your fish for at least two or three weeks before you introduce them into the tank with the rest of your fish. But is it really necessary? That's what we're talking about on this episode of Tank Talk. Welcome to another episode of Tank Talk. My name is John Hudson with KGTropicals.com, and this is a series all about answering your questions submitted in the comments section below or through any other form of social media. I'll have all of my social media accounts listed at the end of this video, but for now, let's get on with the first comment. Okay, so today's first question comes from Ricardo Gutierrez, and it reads like this. I always wonder if I could kickstart a cycle if I pee in the tank. Okay, so today's real question comes from the Inquisitive Fish Guy 71, and it reads like this. What about quarantine, John? Some people advise placing new fish in a quarantine tank for two weeks before introducing them to your tank. Quarantining your new fish is one of those debates that's been around forever. Some people swear that you have to quarantine for a couple of weeks, while others say it's a complete waste of time. To me, the most important thing to ask is why are we quarantining fish? And at the end of this episode, I'll tell you whether or not I choose to quarantine. So why would you quarantine fish in the first place? Well, this is something that all started in the saltwater hobby. And this is because most of the fish in the saltwater hobby are wild caught fish. They're pulled from the ocean and brought to the pet stores and then put in to your aquariums. Now, obviously the water in the ocean is gonna be significantly different than the water that you have in your aquarium. You're also taking them from a third of the planet size tank and putting them into a small tank in your home. So this is something that can be very stressful for the fish. And also they have to get used to the new water parameters. So quarantining them is something that can help them to adjust to the new conditions and to the new environment. So while a fish is acclimating to its new environment and to the new water conditions in your home, this is something that can be very stressful for them. Not to mention that they had just traveled from the ocean to your pet store and then from the pet store to your house. There's a lot going on for these fish, and this can put them under an intense amount of stress. We all know what happens to fish when they're under stress. Plus, you don't know what the fish is bringing with them from the ocean. They can be carrying all different kinds of bugs and parasites and nasty stuff. So putting them in a quarantine tank, if you're in the saltwater hobby, makes a lot of sense. And this is where the whole thing started. There are people who put together elaborate quarantining systems for their saltwater tanks. If you don't believe me, check into that episode of Tanked. I'll try to link it somewhere. A person put thousands and thousands of dollars into a system in their house for quarantining fish. So a lot of people in the saltwater hobby go to extremes when it comes to quarantining. But what about the freshwater hobby? Well, that depends on a few things. One is where did this fish come from? Did this come from your friend's house down the street who you know really well and you know takes really good care of his tanks? Or did it come from a big box pet store? Did you get it from a local mom and pop pet store or did you buy it direct from a breeder? This is very important. Knowing where your fish comes from is gonna tell you whether or not you can trust that that fish is clean and not gonna hurt any of the other fish in the tank. Second thing to think about is what kind of an environment was this fish in prior to you getting it? Was it in a tank full of 45 other fish that were constantly harassing it and chasing it around? Or was this fish living in a tank all by himself, living the life of luxury? Drastically changing that environment, taking them from one extreme to another, is something that can also be really stressful for that fish. And having a little intermediate step might be something that could help them out a lot. In my opinion, if you're buying your fish or you are getting your fish from a friend that you know takes really good care of his tanks, or maybe you're going down to a local breeder that you've dealt with a dozen times before that you know and trust, and you know that they take good care of their systems, it's probably not necessary to quarantine your fish because you know they're going from one good environment to another. But 
If you're buying your fish from someone that you've never bought for, or you're buying it from one of those shady little establishments in an alley somewhere, you know what I'm talking about. You might want to consider quarantining your fish because again, you don't know what that fish is bringing with them. If they've been in an environment that's completely stressing them out and making them sick, you don't want to take that and introduce it straight into your tank. So all of this is dependent on where you're getting your fish from. That's the way I look at it anyway. If you know and you can trust the people you're getting the fish from, you should be okay. But if there's any doubt, you might want to clean them out before you put them in your tank. The biggest thing to remember here is that one sick fish can actually wipe out an entire tank. This is why so many people are so adamant about quarantining their fish. It gives them a little bit of a rest period and a period to check them out and make sure everything's okay before you put them in with the rest of your prized fish that you paid a lot of money for. All you got to remember is that one bad apple spoils the bunch. So what should you do? Well, in my opinion, if you can do it, do it. We are fish keepers, which means we are overkill junkies. So if you can quarantine your fish, might as well play it safe and do it. But what should this quarantine tank be? You've heard me talk in the past, and you're going to hear me talk in the future about the importance of having a hospital tank, particularly if you're into keeping these or any cichlids for that matter. But what I'm not going to tell you is that you need a quarantine tank and a hospital tank. Instead, you can combine the two and just have it available at all times for one of those two purposes. Either a fish gets hurt and you need somewhere to put it, or you've just gotten a new fish and you want to quarantine it for a couple of weeks. You can use the same tank for both things. Just set up a small tank, maybe a 10 gallon or a 20 gallon. If you have something sitting around, it doesn't really have to be any particular size, but have it running and have it available for any of those situations, whether it be as a hospital tank or a quarantine tank, it doesn't need to be big. It doesn't need to be fancy. I've known people to even put them underneath their tanks, like where a sump would go and not even have it visible to the public. It's just something that's under there running in case you need it. It doesn't have to be fancy. I can already see it. One of the first comments is going to be, well, John, how long am I supposed to quarantine my fish? You are the only one that can answer that. It's all going to depend on the circumstances with you getting the fish, and it's all going to depend on how you feel about it. If you feel like the fish is healthy, it's not holding any diseases, it's eating right, it's looking perfect, it's brightly colored, and everything's great, then you can put it in. But how long is that going to take? I don't know. So do I quarantine new fish before I introduce them in with the rest of my fish? The answer is no. But it doesn't mean that I don't think it's a good idea. I actually think it's very smart to quarantine fish if there's any chance that there could be something wrong. But me personally, I only buy fish from people that I trust. I've been that way for the longest time. All of the suppliers that I get fish from, I know, I know them well. I know where their fish have been and I know where they came from. So it's not something that I feel is necessary for me. So what about you? I'd like to know in the comment section below whether you're quarantining your fish or not and what kind of elaborate systems you've set up for that purpose. I'm sure that this is something that we can talk about for years and years because, hey, we've already been talking about it for decades. So let me know in the comment section what you're doing or if you even think that quarantining fish is necessary. And there you have it. I hope that this video has helped you to understand a little bit more about the pros and cons of quarantining fish. This is a pretty serious debate, folks. You can find information about it everywhere, but hopefully you don't need to because you just got all the information that you could ever need right here in this video. And if you feel like you did, maybe you could do us a favor and click that like button down there for us. It really does help us out to get found by other people on YouTube. So thank you all so much for that. Don't forget, like I said before, all of my social media is listed right here. If you want to connect with us that way to get your question in, don't hesitate. Put it in now. And did you forget about the new Tank Talk Facebook group? You've got to join it, folks. I'll put it in the top of the description down below. Head over there and join us in that group. We're having all kinds of fun. It's an easy way to connect direct with me or with Lisa or a whole bunch of other YouTubers and hobbyists and aquarists out there. We're having all kinds of fun. I think we've gotten like 450 members already at the time of me recording this video. So it's growing. We're having a blast with it. Thank you to all the new members and thank you to you for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed it and I look forward to talking to you again next week.